I failed every single big tech interview on my first try. Meta, Google, Amazon, I got rejected from all of them. Even with the referral from a senior staff engineer at Meta, I just couldn't get in. But just two years later, I had offers from both Netflix and Meta. So what changed? And more importantly, how can you do the same thing in 2026, especially with AI completely changing how companies interview? So let's first start off with my own journey on how I got into Meta. Going way back now, I don't even know how long ago, I actually started out as an accountant right out of college, but I absolutely hated that job. It was probably the worst job that I've ever had. So I quit after a year and then I worked as a program manager at a hardware company and I was making around 60 grand a year. Honestly, it was a decent job, but I knew I wanted more. Luckily, during that time, I somehow ended up getting into app development with some of my friends. So I started to learn how to code that way. I actually got started as a designer, but that might be a different story. But yeah, after doing this for a few years on and off, making apps and releasing little games, essentially decided that I want to make programming and coding my job, my career. I have finally found something that I was passionate about and I wanted to do for the rest of my life. So I bet on myself, I left my job and I found a coding bootcamp. During this bootcamp, I basically spent all of my time on this singular focus. I was basically studying nonstop during this time. And importantly, I also did a bunch of hackathons. I ended up winning actually three hackathons in a row and I took home about $20,000 worth of sponsor prizes. And that tagline became a big component of my resume right out of the bootcamp. But yeah, so hackathons were really important, but there was actually one hackathon that mattered more than any of the others. And it was actually at Meta's campus. It was called Chime Hack, and it was a hack for good, essentially. It was an overnight event, and I was just mind blown at like the organization, the campus, all the free snacks, and just like the tech culture, the hack culture. I was just, I just fell in love with it. And I remember there was this one moment, they asked us to come out at like midnight. There was this little donut stand next to this crane. And this crane is kind of a memorial piece at Meta. It has some history about it. And it's mainly meant as a way for Meta to remember its past and where they came from to, so that they don't repeat any mistakes of the old and make sure you continue to innovate and move forward. I learned about that history and I was eating that donut. And I just remember, I told myself that moment, I'm going to work here if it's the last thing that I do. So that became my goal. Meta wasn't just another company for me, but it was the company for me. So after I won the hackathon, I finished my bootcamp and shortly, about a month or so out, I landed my first job at Capital One. The initial offer was about $105,000 plus like a $25,000 signing bonus, which is insane because I had been making 60 grand just like three months ago. The interviews was pretty straightforward. You know, JavaScript trivia, behavior questions, some leak code actually. I had to do a binary search. Um, that was probably the hardest problem that I had to do, which is like nothing, right? So here's like a quick side tip. If you're trying to break into tech right now and you're struggling, I would suggest trying to target tech adjacent companies. Like FinTech is perfect because it's kind of less sexy, obviously than pure tech. So there's usually less competition, but you still get that Fortune 500 brand name, which I think is actually really important if your real goal, end goal is like big tech. And this is exactly what happened to me. Around year three at Capital One, after getting promoted, you know, a few times, the emails did start flowing from Meta, Google, Amazon, Netflix, basically all the companies, they were reaching out to me. And when I started getting these emails, I just thought that I was ready. So I went for it. And then I interviewed with all the big companies and I failed every single one. I usually pass like that first screening, you know, problem that you do. But then every single onsite, I, I bombed. You know, it was a huge wake up call for me and it was really brutal. I had thought that I knew data structures and algorithms, but I honestly didn't. I was really out of my depth. And the worst part, I think, I actually had a referral from a senior staff engineer at Meta and I still didn't get in. 
So after getting my ass handed to me, I just realized that if I really wanted to make it into big tech, I needed to go all out. The second time that I attempted my interviews, it actually coincided with my second child being born. I had about eight weeks of pet leave and I made a decision that moment that I'm going to use all of my free time to get into Meta or any big tech. My days kind of look like this. I would wake up, take care of the baby, make sure my wife was good, you know, she needed everything she needed, spend some more time with the family, and then Every other waking moment, I just study my ass off. No YouTube, no side projects, no video games, no distractions, just pure grinding. And it really hurts me to say, but I paused this YouTube channel actually. Looking back, I sometimes wish I had kept making videos. Uh, maybe my channel will be a lot bigger now, but I probably wouldn't have been able to get into Meta or any of the big tech companies if I didn't go all in. And at the end of the day, I actually became a much better engineer, right? I was able to reason about all of these data structures and algorithms and finally see why all of this stuff matter at the end of the day. So when I was well prepped and I did the interviews again, I interviewed at a bunch of companies. Some notable ones are Amazon, Google, Netflix, and Meta. I didn't get into Google. I think I messed up on one interview. I thought I had crushed Amazon's interview. <laughs> Actually, I think I did the best in Amazon interview, but I didn't get an offer from them, which was crushing. But I did get an offer from Netflix and Meta. Now, Netflix would have paid me more. But the thing is, that role was an internal accounting like tool that they were building. And I wasn't really that excited about it. On the other hand, Meta offered me a rotational engineering position. This was basically a E3 role, but you basically had one year to prove that you were E4 level or you were fired. Now, obviously this was technically a downgrade from my principal engineer title at Capital One, but even with the downgrade, I decided to go with Meta anyways, and even with the less pay. Now, a lot of people thought I was crazy, and sometimes I think about that decision, but that moment at that hackathon, I just had to work at Meta. That moment really stuck with me, and I had full confidence in my ability to be able to early graduate and just crush it moving forward. And you know what? That's exactly what happened. I early graduated the rotation program after just one rotation, so I became an E4 engineer at that moment. And I switched to mobile engineering actually, and I joined Instagram Reels right around the time that they launched. So I got to be part of the launch, which is sick. And then I went from E4 to E5 in a year, and E5 to E6 to staff in another year. Currently, I'm still E6, working on threads. Maybe I'll hit E7 soon, someday. But yeah, even though I took this downgrade to join Meta, I was actually making 30% more than what I was making at Capital One as a senior engineer salary. But yeah, so this is how I got into Meta. I feel like I had everything against me, you know, no Ivy League school, no CS degree, no relevant experience. Somehow got started, I found a path and I made it work. And that's why I always believe that if you want it badly enough, you can make it work for yourself. So let's talk about you now. How can you make it work? How can you yourself get into a big tech company like Meta? So if I was getting ready to prep for a big interview at a big tech company in 2026, this is what I would do. First and foremost, we cannot ignore AI. Honestly, I think there are probably only like two possible futures for interviews because of AI, besides obviously the continued Zoom thing, but I don't think that's gonna last for very long. So I think there's two possible ways, right? One is an AI assisted interviews, like that's gonna be a thing at some point, or everyone is going to go back in person. <laughs> And either way, for both directions, I think the fundamentals about interview prep that I'm going to share now is gonna work for both cases. The first thing is Liko. It's a little bit of a joke, right? Because we have AI solving Liko problems now, but I still think it's very important for you to be good at Liko and, and pattern recognize problems very quickly. It, it's not really like just solving the problems fast. Honestly, it's really fundamentally understanding data structures and algorithms at a deep level. Knowing that when you see like a certain pattern or certain problem set, certain approaches can work really well. That has always been the reason why leak code is important. You know, because one thing that people don't realize when they're doing interviews is that the speed factor does matter because there's usually like follow-ups and variants that come out. If you ever did an interview and you're like, 
oh, I solved every single problem. I still didn't get the job. Most likely you solved the problems a little too slowly and the interviewer actually had a bunch of follow-ups, but they didn't get to it. And even with AI assisted interviews, even if the AI can solve all of your legal problems, you'll still need to explain your thought process. So unfortunately, you still need to lead code. So the next thing I would do is study the interview formats of the companies you want to work at. This day and age, you should be able to find almost to a T what a company's interview format looks like. And honestly, if you can't figure out, I would just do a mock interview with them or find someone on LinkedIn and ask them. But at the end of the day, you need to know how to code, talk about your work and understand systems. Like that's basically it. That's the software engineer interview. So get really crisp on your understanding of the format. Now, the next thing that I think is really important is get better at telling your story. Most engineers are terrible at this and it kills them in behavioral rounds. You really need to get good at telling compelling stories. You know, I like to use the star format. It stands for situation, task, action, and result. So yeah, try this, but there's other ones. Figure out one that works for you. I recommend you to do a bunch of mock interviews. Ask ChatGPT to like do a mock interview for you. Find someone in the industry who's good at interviewing and have them interview you. If you can't talk about your projects in a compelling way, you're going to fail in the behavior route. And I've seen it happen over and over again. It's just like some people are just really bad at it. <laughs> I always say this, but I think communication and being able to communicate well in a meaningful way is probably the most leveraged skill that you should develop as an engineer or anyone in the tech industry. All right, next is network like your career <laughs> depends on it. Because at the end of the day, it kind of does, right? I don't need to tell you that getting a referral is better than just cold applying. Companies have high trust in the people that they hire. So yeah, referrals work and you should get one. Go to LinkedIn, go to hackathons, go to meetups. Just do what you need to do to network and meet the people that can help you get into that door. And when you meet these people, you need to be prepared. You need to have a good resume. You need to have a good story and you need to show passion. I remember back when I was first starting, I got all of my first interviews because I went to meetups and talked to random people and like all the speakers and I got referrals. I reached out to like second degree connections and LinkedIn and stuff. Every time I would send like an application without any introduction, it would always just be nothing like crickets. But every time I send something with a referral, I always got a response. So network like your life depends on it. Now, finally, I would say interviewing, it's actually a numbers game. There's some luck factor in interviews, right? What kind of problems did you prep the night before? Who are your interviewers? Are they having a good day or not? Maybe the company changed their mind at the last moment. There's so many different factors in interviews. That's why you kind of have to play the numbers game. Sometimes you might feel like you killed it and crushed it, but you still don't get that offer. For me, that was like Amazon. I thought I crushed it, but I still didn't get the offer. I don't know why they gave me a generic answer, but maybe someone else just did way better than me. So you just don't know. So you need to interview to a lot of places. And here's one thing that you need to really think about is that there are tiers to tech companies. And if you're like in a tier C, if you get into a tier B or a tier A company, then it's going to be easier for you next time around to get to the final destination that you're trying to get to. It's definitely possible to make that step jump. But when I wasn't even working at Capital One, I was at just some no name startup. I wasn't even getting callbacks. So play the numbers game, interview a lot. You know, when you're interviewing also interview at multiple places at the same time, because once you have like offers, you can use them against each other to get a higher negotiation. But yeah, there's recognize that there is a luck factor and all of the preparation that you're doing is just ways to improve that luck. Don't get down on yourself if something gets unlucky and you don't get in. Keep moving up step by step and one day you will get it. And that's basically it. Honestly, interviewing is just a ton of work. There isn't really another way, no secret cheat code to get through this. 
And when I look back at my journey, the difference between attempt number one and attempt number two wasn't like new talent all of a sudden. It was mainly just more preparation and understanding of how the game was actually played. That first time, I think technically I had even more going for me, right? I had a good referral from like a senior staff engineer, but I still failed. And the second time I didn't really have a referral. I just went through like a recruiter reached out for me, but I still got in. And that's mainly because I did this brutal preparation, right? Like four to six hours every single day for a month. But yeah, I remember I sacrificed a bunch of good things that was happening during that time, but I think it was definitely worth it for me. And honestly, I think you can do it too. I bet there's like a ton of people out there that is kind of hesitant to give this thing a try. Don't let anyone tell you that you do need a CS degree or that you're too old to get started or some other random excuse. You know, I landed my first software job when I was 28. At the end of the day, I am not that special. But yeah, that's wraps up this video. If you find this video helpful, check out my other videos. I have this one video I just did called five career killers. So go and check that out. Let me know. Thanks for watching. Good luck with your interviews in 2026. And until I see you guys on the next one, bye.